Hawkins Street was like a, a little microcosm of every adult trying to build in every child an ambassador from Hawkins Street. So when you get all your degrees, you realize, I know why she told me I don't want to hear any excuse. I don't want to see you take any shortcuts. I want to see you put your shoulder to the grindstone and get the job done. My dad, my grandmama said there's no excuse for failure other than you have fear. And you can't have faith and fear at the same time. That's the reason I have never been frightened of attacking on any job where, where there's justice involved. Nashville has always been a place of a laboratory. This was the first urban renewal, right? It was the first metropolitan government, and it was the first city in the South to integrate its counters and toilets. Now that's not a whole lot of saying good things about Nashville, but it is saying that we can make changes. It says we can be a pilot for justice. We haven't become that in the last 30, 40 years. We're going the other direction. But there's a history of this city being on the cutting edge of social justice. We can get back to that, but we've got to stop making excuses for, for being frightened of our history. You, you can't close down the lunch counters, you can't close up the movie theaters and, and act like there was never a problem in Nashville. You can't close up the pool in Centennial and turn it into an art center and say there was never a struggle to integrate a pool here. It's like saying, let's don't celebrate the 4th of July because the British get pissed off. You got to look at history and say, we learn from history. Have we finished? We're far from finished. Are we a democracy? Far from it. But you're always in the process of getting there. And that's the, that's the role that Nashville played in the 60s and should play it again now. If you aren't decided that I'm going to be an agent of change, then the world will change you. you it's like my mom and grandma said, you can't have both ways. Either I'm going to be the catalyst to change what I see, or I'm going to accept what I see and let the world change me. And that's a tough personal choice to make. All my children are not radicals, okay? I wouldn't want my children to be clones of radical Kwame Lillard. I want them to find a purpose and say, I'm going to do this good. I know I'm not going to leave this earth unless I leave a mark on this earth. Our generation had a, left a mark called civil rights. Now we didn't do all of it, we did leave a mark. I would hate to be a 19 year old and think I can't change anything. I think that causes a lot of despair, a lot of drug addiction, a lot of sexual abuse because young folks got to feel it's my time. I'm going to get this done. They're going to know I was on this earth. You got to leave a mark on this earth. And I don't think our kids believe that anymore. I think they feel the world is too complex, too, too dangerous, and they've been taught to not develop coalitions. Unless it's your church, your religion, your color, you won't build across the line coalitions to, to develop more muscle, more resources, uh, more narratives of, yes, we can do it. In our group, we like to, we like to think locally, but act globally. And I think until we can get a generation that really inculcates this concept that we're just one little tiny country on a 250 country globe, one little country that speaks English, one little country that's Christian, and we're in a minority. And we can understand that and teach our children that. Like in Jamaica, the kids learn four religions because in Jamaica, all these tourists come there. So the kids have to learn how to relate to all these tourists who are not Baptists, who are not Church of Christ. And we got to learn to our children, you are a global human being on a little planet. Actually, it's not a reward for me. Behind me, there's all my neighbors, all the little old ladies, all the men, all the older guys, the alcoholics, the doctors who took the time to make me a person with a purpose. I think you're giving them an award because they'd be very proud of the fact that I listen. All those many lectures, all those many scoldings, all those many beatings I got for being who I am. And that's who you give an award to.